Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. Time for another Metal Earth build, another Halo build from the newer series that they have released. I have the UNSC Scorpion. A very complex looking tank. It looks like this is going to take a while. But, no sense talking too much about it. Let's open it up and see what's inside. The UNSC Scorpion. Another complex looking tank. Inside we have two metal sheets and two pages for the instructions or two sheets of paper. <coughs> Open this up, flip it around, and you we start off at page one. You got the usual logo, the web address for the 360 view drawing line drawing of the model and sheet down here we have a picture of one of the parts pointing at insertion tab insertion holes and fold line so you know what those are the bit about the bit about needle nose pliers being helpful for assembly we have the legend when you see a blue circle at a connection point is telling you to insert and bend the tab over green triangle tells you to insert and twist the tab 90 degrees and this is just telling you to pull and screw metal tabs 90 degrees to tighten. We have the other part of the legend, the newer part, where if you see an E pointing at one side of a part, it's telling you that's the engraved side. Any e is pointing at telling you the non-engraved side, which is not always clear. And then we have the intention point, just trying to get your attention about something in particular, whether it's pay attention to this goes, this tab goes in this slot, or this part faces this way. It's not always very obvious, but it's trying to keep you from missing something important. Down here we have the metal sheets, or the layout of the metal sheets. Let's see if I can't work it out here. There we go, there's one. And there's two. So the numbers point to the part so that you can find the part on the sheet and build the model. Put those back to the side and slide over to the start of the assembly flowchart on page two. Starting with part one, it's pointing at the engraved side, so the engraved side goes face up. Bend it this way at this part, it's just follow the directions. Bending and shaping and adding parts, there's part two. Go down here to continue on with adding three and four and five. Just follow the arrows and construct it. Oh, this one turns and comes back. Watch out, that happens sometimes. And then down here, get to the bottom of page two, flip it over for page three. And much of the same, page four. Once you're done with that, you grab the next sheet, open it up to the inside, to page five, follow the arrows and add the parts, page six, on the back is page seven, we're almost there, page eight, you get down to the bottom and you're done. Let's talk tools. I have a pretty standard set of tools that I use in most every build. I have needle nose pliers. I have flat nose pliers. I have flush clippers. These are a must for me. They clip parts off the sheets quickly and cleanly. I have a set of precision tweezers, one with a very pointed end, one with the pointed end ground down slightly, and flat set with a sort of curved tip, useful for twisting tabs in slightly curved areas also have a pretty standard set of tweezers with a flat angled end. These come in one of the Iconics kits and I use them a lot. Ring pliers or round nose pliers can be found with jewelry making tools and work wonderfully for curving delicate and or hard to get to areas. Curved needle nose pliers to me are very useful for bending over longer thin areas that have obstructions that keep regular needle nose pliers from getting to them and being helpful. They can also be handy in tight places. I've recently started using a sculpting set. I got this pretty cheap on Amazon. It's a whole set, just a lot of different shapes and sizes, some with angles, some with points, some with flat sides. It's good for pushing over tabs, reaching inside and pushing on the inside, helping to shape small areas you're just too tight to get into. And we have a couple of 
hook shapes down here to replace the hook tools that I used to use. I've got the metal sheets. We've looked over the directions briefly. Got some tools to get us started. Let's put this together. We start with the turrets and gun, and they are quite challenging to shape. There are so many odd shapes and angles. It took time to figure out how things were bent and angled. I really had to fight and pull and stretch to get the tabs in place, especially the last two tabs. I stopped the camera to look at the 360 view to see if I was doing something wrong or to look for a hint as to how to make it work. In the end, I just had to keep stretching and pulling and adjusting until the tabs went into place. As I was securing part 5, part 2 broke in one of its bins. I hear this is not an uncommon thing. It still had enough tabs to hold things on. I had to twist a couple of tabs instead of just leaving them bent over, but all was not lost. This is where I twist the tabs on part 2 to keep it from falling off.
This may be worse than the nose cone of Poe Dameron's X-Wing. My frustration level at this point was pretty high. It took quite a few breaks. I have said it in plenty of other videos, but this has been edited down. I'm not showing you every single thing. Sometimes it takes a lot of adjusting of tabs and angles to get things to fit. I tend to also edit out repetitive steps, folds, and bends. This is so the video will not be overly long, but I do try to leave in important steps and information. My advice, take your time, double check, and look ahead in the directions, and be patient. I goofed up here, I should have placed part 14 on top of part 13 before attaching the top gun part.
I didn't want to have to take part 14 off because I had a lot of trouble getting it into place. So I just opened it up a little bit, bent the back tab before putting it on the turret, then used a tool to reach in and bend over the front tab. I hate it when parts pop out of my tweezers and fly off into oblivion. This is another one of those places where it took a long time to figure out the angles and get the tabs in their slot. Thank you. 
I couldn't get the last tab in, so I pulled the part off and then started with that difficult tab. And another part flies off somewhere. I found the first part, but I never could find this one. I lightly twisted the first two tabs just to hold things. Now that the part is on, I will untwist and bend them over.
It's usually a good idea to bend tabs on angled parts so that they are all pointing towards the next connection. It helps tabs to line up more easily with their slots. I should have bent the tabs here over instead of twist. I double checked myself later and realized the mistake. Bending them over will allow the final piece to go on easier. I should not have bent down the first side. The good news is, it's easy to open back up.
the other two front and back tracks are for the other side and build the same as the first two. It's just some of the parts are mirrored. There's that one little tab in the fold on some of these parts that's just easier to bend over than to try and twist. And once again, we are dealing with the nightmare of a turret.
I never did get that last tab in far enough to secure it and just kind of gave up on it. There are lots of other tabs holding it on. I give you the Halo Scorpion. I'm holding it on my hand like it's an actual scorpion. That's, that's kind of funny. I didn't realize what I was doing at first. This is a frustrating build and there's so many, especially around the turret, there's so many odd angles and shapes. It reminded me a little bit of the Kawasaki Iconics motorcycle which had a lot of funky shapes but they weren't that hard to figure out. This just seemed impossible at first and it was it was very frustrating straight from the beginning. Now this one took four hours and 15 minutes and I probably more precise than I would normally say but it felt like it took 10 hours. This thing went on forever. It took several breaks for me to just go calm down because I had such a difficult time putting these pieces together. It kind of became uh, nicknamed the Nightmare Tank because of the difficulty involved. And it really took away from enjoying the build, unfortunately. It looks fairly nice completed. I'm not proud of mine. It's kind of rough looking. It didn't come together well. There's a couple of tabs that have tried to pop loose. So yes, I have put a couple of dabs of super glue to help hold things down which I really don't like to do but this one needed it and I'm glad it's over so unless you're a big Halo fan and have to have this in your collection I'd say skip it because again it wasn't I'm not a big Halo fan I like Halo I respect Halo I've played Halo but that really took the fun out of it for me honestly if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Have you given the Nightmare Tank a try yourself? Tell me, how did it go? Thank you for watching, and keep on keeping on.